It's one of the subjects we wanted to touch on today, um, and we'll sort of jump to that one, just accessibility. Um, the media has evolved so dramatically, and I've only been paying attention to this local part for the last six years, and how much the print world, the radio world, the TV world, the speaking world, the uh, written world um, in magazine form has evolved so dramatically. And the two of you, I would say, are among the most adaptable ones I've ever seen because you're in all those different formats. And you didn't just say, I'm a print guy and I'm going to stick with print the whole world, or I'm a radio guy and I'm going to stick with radio. I think I've watched you both evolve in a lot of different forms. Um, and ultimately, your story or your news angle is what's trans, you know, transcended all of those avenues. Tell me a little bit about that. That's the timeless part of it, is the storytelling. It's timeless from Shakespeare to CSI. Mm -hmm. You give somebody a complication, you I give like somebody that. a resolution, and that's all they want to see. Every song, every good song has a complication resolution factor. Every good movie, every TV show. You see a dead body in the first five minutes of a show. How to get there? How can we solve it? 55 minutes later, you have your answer. You go to bed that night, you feel good. Same with a good, good story. And I think it, it, it evolves. It doesn't matter if it's on Twitter or Facebook, my Casual Friday show, a column. Tell me a good story. We like to pretend we're in the 21st century, but a lot of us are living in that campfire has changed to a computer screen. Yeah. That's the warmth we're getting from it now. That's a great point. What led you both to evolve into the multiple forms that you're in? I mean, you know, you might have started as a print reporter, but now you're in all those things. You might have started as a cartoon columnist, I then did, a print yeah. reporter, um, and now you're in all these other media. Um, what led to that? It's just fun and challenging. Actually, I just don't say no. That's like why I'm here today with you. When Chris Mallman says, you be at this round table, damn it. <laughs> you be at this round table. I didn't say it like that. You I did twist your arm, but I didn't say it You like don't that. say no. No, well, I don't say no. So somebody says, you want to do a radio show? Literally, somebody says, hey, I heard you do a radio interview. Would you like to have a show of your own? That's how I started. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't know. I've never done it before. You want to write, you know, I was doing cartoon, I was doing political cartoons for the Times newspapers in like mid-90s. Yeah. And I was handing one every week. And I was standing there once and Doug Ross at the Times says, hey, you want to cover a story for us? We can't find somebody to cover this story. Uh, okay. No history, no background. I couldn't even type. I don't know what a fax machine was at that <laughs> point. Nothing at all. What's a lead? What's a nut graph? Nothing at all. They sent me to this mystical, magical place called Couts, Indiana. <laughs> I'm a Gary boy. I had no idea where Couts was. And I covered this wonderful event called the Couts Pork Fest. That was my first story I ever covered, the Pork Fest. You know? So I went down there with a big legal pad and a pen, my two kids in tow, and I was looking around, looking for an angle, looking for context, looking for something different. You talk to some people. Now you could write a festival coverage thing in your sleep, right, Mike? That you don't even have to go to festivals. <laughs> you know what they're going to say at these things. I have it all recorded, and I don't like bringing it to stuff. Because if they sell this, <clears throat> yeah, Jerry David's supposed to be, what do you feel about, yeah. you even tensed up oh, when yeah. I'm asking you. <laughs> well, you know, is, you went, whoa, right. hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> What's your views on abortion? Tell me, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, they go out there, and we want you to do a feature story on the fair, <clears throat> and come back by three or four o'clock, you gotta bang that story out in about an hour so it can get to print for the next morning. Things were a little bit different back then when I, you know, it feels like it was ages ago, but the way yeah, deadlines like were, them, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, you, you gotta, you know, get that story done. So using a tape recorder back then would almost be, you know, you can't go back and listen to that sound, so you gotta take really good notes. But I was just saying, when people are at a place they're having a good time, it's a fair, I mean, what news do you really want out of this, you yeah. know? So it would be difficult for me, and I, I can be, I, you know, it can be a shy person, socially awkward, unless I'm there at a function for a, an official capacity, I could be kind of a, you know, yeah, you, you, know, go, from, the wall, you go from you know? Mike to Michael Puente. Yeah, the real know? Mike, yeah. the real Mike's boring. Yeah. <laughs> right, and passive and shy. <laughs>